John here, guys, and today we're talking about the new goggle releases that all happened in a single weekend. Wow! The Fat Shark Dominator new HD system released at Roto Riot Rampage to several videos from Bardwell, from Roto Riot Channel itself, and Cricket, as well as others, getting their hands on this new system. And it's been shrouded in mystery. Well, finally, Carl over at HD Zero was able to sit back, watch the events unfold, and then release his own goggles, pretty much saying, too soon, Junior. It's so interesting to see the different takes by these different companies and how they're handling and respecting their customer base and our community differently. The Rotor Riot Fat Shark release basically saying, we aren't trusted to know. We don't need to know. We're not telling you. All of the questions that are coming up about this system and its origins and its technology, but even though we are not deemed worthy of knowing, our money is deemed worthy, and they're asking for that money today. Meanwhile, HD0 so far is asking for nothing but for you to sit back relax and be blown away by the feature set. If we designed a goggle by committee, I don't think we could have even come up with a solution as elegant and as nice and as feature packed as this one. It's an interesting time to compare and contrast the two systems, one that enlists the community and the customer base in order to build it for exactly what they want and the other ignoring the community, but still demanding you hand over a pile of money for an unfinished product. Fat Shark and Rotor Riot, two of the largest and storied companies in FPV, which also have the most damaged reputations, joined forces for sort of a Voltron of failure launch. They show a product that looks and feels like DJI, but they're promising that it's not DJI. Then we see the same product launched at two other places under different names, Avatar, and even on Flywoo's website. They're going as far as to copying DJI's menu system one for one, but saying they only did that so that you wouldn't be confused as that any other menu system would be unreadable to anyone that's already used it. Does that really make sense? Speculation has gone wild, and we haven't seen this level of desktop detective work since that time the internet banded together to find out who messed with those cats, which turned into a Netflix special. Three theories have emerged. Most of them are based on the great work by Mads Tech and It's Blunty and many others in the community who've been doing a ton of fantastic investigative journalism. Please, as soon as this is over, go check out Mads Tech's longer and great videos on the subject for more details. Number one theory. This is DJI backdooring sanctions to get on our shelves. There are restrictions on DJI. These are not to keep DJI out of retail outlets, but to be involved in any sort of government contract, which means that you as a consumer have every right to go put a DJI Mavic on your Christmas list and an hour after opening lose control of it, never to find it again. However, no government contracts can exist that involve DJI products. This, of course, is a huge loss of potential revenue, so they could be creating a series of shell companies like Cadix, which points to Walksnail, which ultimately leads back to DJI. Get it? Shell company? Walksnail? Number two theory is that the Cadix Walksnails is a bootleg version of the DJI system. Some speculation was that Cadix was working on their own HD system for years, but they couldn't quite figure it out. Eventually, they had the chance to become the most coveted spot, the partner of DJI to bring the video transmitter units to market, the air unit and the Vista, being Though DJI partner making their own cameras that work with the system, they would have been given access to all type of spec sheets and product information. But they were eventually able to assemble a copy of the system using what they know about the DJI tech to fill in the blanks of their own system. Much like how in Jurassic Park, they used frog DNA to fill in the gaps of the dino DNA. We used the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the... 
hold and complete the code. And now we can make a baby dinosaur. This is my personal favorite theory, and it feels like the most plausible, but I can't tell if I only feel that way because it also feels the most like one of my favorite movie plots of all time. If it is true, and they use their connections with DJI to learn more about their system and create their own version, it feels a bit like they stood on the shoulders of geniuses and took the next step. You know, you read what others had done, and you, and you took the next step. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could. And now they want to sell it and package it, and they want you to put your hard-earned money down, almost $700 to pre-order it. Number three theory is that this is something totally new, and they only copied the menu system so that it looks more familiar to existing users. This is the comments coming from Walks now, but it sounds suspicious at best. What we do know for sure is that the demo units shown off at the Rotor Riot videos has many pieces of functionality that were not working yet, such as the DVR, the most basic function of any FPV goggle. We also know that the FCC filing or approval has not taken place yet, meaning that even with zero manufacturing delays, it could be much much longer before you had these in hand. Yet, they're asking for your money now and not happy about you or anyone else asking too many questions. Does any of this mean it will be a bad system? No, it could still be great, whichever of these ends up being the case. But before you buy in, before I buy in, I want to see a working version and I recommend you do the same. Now let's talk about the HD Zero product launch. HD Zero is a company that's actually listening to the community. They had a couple of hard launches along the way and they have licked their wounds learned their lessons and man what a stride they are hitting it has to feel good that carl was able to have a launch that totally took the spotlight away from fat shark after fat shark pulled out of their agreements with hd zero and really left them holding the bag. The only way HD Zero was able to stay afloat was that Carl dipped into his own pockets to help keep the system going, and now it's beginning to flourishing. And this goggle release, timed perfectly, is something of beauty. I can't help but feel for Carl left in these terrible situations by Fat Shark. Now, who knows what the reason was? There were some disagreements that took place. We don't know who's really at fault, and it doesn't matter. Either way, whether he was at fault or Fat Shark, he was put in a bad situation. His company could have died when Fat Shark decided to pull out and no longer support HD Zero especially who would have known they were working on their own system behind the scenes. Now it all kind of makes a lot more sense. Carl, though, listens to the community. He dove in. He's been asking all of us. He's been working with testers on the ground level. And this is the culmination of all of those efforts. The beautifully designed goggle that will feature a new rail system that will allow all manner of mounting antennas, analog modules, or whatever you want. If you've always been misplacing your keys when you fly, you could design and print a key holder to hang on them because HD Zero will be releasing the files to help you design your own mounts for this. This is what happens when a brand not just tries to sell its customer base something, but also actively listens and collaborates with them. This isn't a goggle by HD Zero to sell to the FPV community. It's something that's been developed in sync. Seeing both of these launch in the same weekend, you'll start to see just how much these things make a difference in the end product. Here's some other features that we now know about HD Zero. There's an on-off sliding switch. It's designed to be open source and the new goggle actually runs Linux. The panels are 1080p OLEDs refreshing at 90 hertz with sliding IPD adjustments. It actually is going to have fixed latency video transmission for goggles to goggles, four milliseconds of latency, the lowest we've ever seen. And it's also going to fix that analog jitter that you see on regular analog goggles. So it may also be the best goggle for analog. Speaking of which, you will have an analog 
capability, unlike the Fat Sharks, unlike any other goggle that we've seen on the market. No one has asked us to go 100% digital, not even DJI. And so kind of the nerve or just the lack of awareness of the market of Fat Shark is kind of overwhelming when you think about it. It has HDMI input so that you can input something from a ground station, use the goggles for simulators, or watch movies on it, and an HDMI output so that you can easily share your feed with anyone else, put it out to a large screen. It's going to have 3.5 millimeter connections for headphones to listen to your quad or microphones to record you cursing in your goggle feed as you crash through a series of tree branches. Excellent. It's also going to have recessed antenna mounting. That means that all of your antennas will be a little bit more flush to the goggle, meaning you won't ever have to take them out. Have you ever gotten to the field only realizing you left your antennas at home? Well, that drive of shame will never have to happen to you again. Carl has your back on that one. It'll have Express LRS backpack support, side-mounted analog module bay that accepts all of today's analog modules, an add-on to be able to add Wi-Fi video streaming to live stream your flights, and of course, swappable place plates. Um, this list goes on and on. We're not going to cover all of them. So which will you put your money down for? A new DJI-like system or one that has an analog input and a rail system, one that has none? So what are you going to do? If you're out there and you're a beginner or you're shopping for your next set of goggles, there's pretty much three ways that you can go at this time. The DJI system, the HD0 system, or analog. I don't really recommend anyone put money down on an unproven technology. Um, Orca is going to be coming out with another system, so you may want to wait for that, but Orca is not asking you to fund their manufacturing process. Orca is not asking for your money yet. Fat Shark is. Now they have shown a demo, which is more than what Orca's done. However, you can see by that demo that there are a number of things not working. We can see that there's no FCC filing or approval yet. And the one thing that we've learned from the struggles that HD0 and Orca have had during this chip shortage time is that manufacturing delays can happen at any second, at any time, due to delays in the actual manufacturing process or due to shortages of any individual components. Remember when Orca and HD0 both had significant delays due to only missing one or two small components from the bill of materials needed to assemble their products? That can happen to anyone. So Fat Shark saying, give us your money now, even though the product's not finished and we'll ship it in a couple of months. It just doesn't jive right, guys, regardless of whether the system is perfect. Now, if this is DJI, I'd actually feel a bit better about it because DJI is proven they have support, they have resources to fix things like bugs. But if it's just a clone of DJI, then you'll end up with all the shortcomings of the DJI system with none of the actual support and research and resources behind it to fix any glaring issues, and you'll kind of be out on your own. Also remember that Fat Shark, this is their third time diving into HD systems. And what happened to anyone who bought into the Bite Frost system? You were literally left out in the cold because they up and decided, it's not working out, we're washing our hands of this, and we're moving on. The same thing ended up happening with Shark Bite later on. And if Carl hadn't swooped in using his own money to keep that system going, it would be gone. Carl's the reason why it went forward. Luckily for us, he had the pockets and the determination and the willingness to work with our community. So even if you're not a big fan of the HD0 system, you really got to pay attention to this. I recommend everyone at least give it a try because while I'm not using it for everything, I have multiple quads with it on the system right now. Just for transparency to my own viewership, I'm not racing on HD0 yet. There are those that are. Joe Mama in my community is. He's actually beating me at most races on HD0 while I'm flying analog. But I do have HD0 on my tiny trainer, which I'm racing with. I do have HD0 one watt on a freestyle. When asked why doesn't it have an analog input, Gerg from Fat Shark basically said, you know what? 
if you're buying these Fat Shark HD goggles, you probably already have some analog goggles, so just use those. That's the answer. Well, that doesn't really work for us because part of what made DJI so affordable was that we were all able to sell our Fat Shark HDO2s in order to offset the cost. In fact, I think I actually sold my Fat Sharks for more than my DJI goggles if you had it during that legendary DJI Father's Day sale where they were selling for super cheap. So I actually made money switching to DJI. Their solution is just have two sets of goggles, peasants. That's really not an option for everyone. I carry multiple sets of goggles, but it's because I have this channel. Not everyone does that. Not everyone can afford to do that. Not everyone wants to do that. With the HD Zero goggle, you can have the best of both worlds potentially, especially if you have no desire to utilize that DJI system. It feels a bit like Fat Shark was so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they never stopped to ask themselves whether they should. And before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well,